We are going to we're going to record these presentations, and we're going to get started with our last presentations of this 2022 Washington Small Fruit Conference. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, and this last session is a real Alan Schreiber show, so you're in for a treat. And his first talk is disease control in raspberries. Thanks, Alan. Should be should be ready for you. Okay, I'm gonna talk about two diseases on raspberries. The first one I'm gonna talk about is, is cane blight. Um, this work was carried out by uh, Tom Walters and myself. Uh, in the case of cane blight, uh, Lisa Jones of Northwest Plant was, um, was uh, helpful with this. Um, uh, Shout out to Enfield Farms for giving us a place to, to do the trial. Uh, cane blight is a relatively new, uh, relatively, it's not a new pest, but uh, it didn't seem to bother Meeker and some of the older varieties. It is, it is the bane of uh, uh, the wake varieties and some other, other new varieties. We've been working on this for a couple of years. Uh, we, we tried some different uh, different products to do a, one of what I'm famous for, a basic screening trial. And we didn't, we weren't able to show, um, we, we want, we did these trials for two years. Um, we wanted to protect the, the, the floricanes, primocanes and floricanes, but we had to do the trial for two years to get to the point where we could see what the effect was on the primocane. And when you, you see here the untreated check was in the middle. We had several products that were slightly higher uh, infection rate in the untreated check, although it wasn't significantly different. Um, you see decrease, increasing infection as this uh, column goes down. You see that the product that had the most uh, efficacy was Miravos, followed by Luna Tranquility. So Miravos, Luna Tranquility are the ones that seem like they might have some activity. These products were applied at the timing of uh, botrytis timing. So uh, whatever you'd be applying for bot uh, timing for botrytis is when we applied those five times and they were directed at the base of the, uh, at the basal portion of the, of the plant. Um, two of the treatments Vellum Prime, this is Vellum Prime um, early and then 30 days later, um, we checked for root lesion nematodes because Vellum Prime has nematicidal activity. At June 11th, uh, the time of the, of the A application, just bef before the A application, there was 160, 134, 559, uh, root lesion nematodes per gram of root, respectively, for untreated check and the vellum prime treatments. At the end of the season, the untreated check went from 166 uh, up to 713, while the vellum prime with one application went from 134 to 17, and the two applications went from 559 to 15.4. So, one thing that we learned was that Bellum Prime, and, and these, these were uh, nematode timings. Uh, these were applied at the time recommended for, for nematode control. It did not help with cane blight, um, with reducing cane blight, but we came up with a nice data set that shows that Bellum Prime um, is efficacious for controlling root lesion nematode. Um, and it would appear, now one of the things that's a little complicated is there's a big difference between these two numbers, but the rate of reduction here was much greater. It suggests that one application of Vellum Prime will really reduce, 
root, le root lesion nematodes, but two applications has uh, even a better effect. So maybe we failed successfully. We weren't able to show efficacy, but we uh, serpetis, not serp uh, serendipitously showed that uh, you could get root lesion nematode control with Velum Prime. So we kept doing this work for um, uh, another year, same treatments. And what we found in this case is, okay, in this case, as you go down, numbers get smaller, treatment gets better. Miravos was significant, had significantly reduced levels of cane blight. So four applications uh, this year, in this case, for whatever it's worth, Vellum Prime, um, well, I guess there's, there's no difference between any of these treatments. The take home message from this trial is uh, application of Miravos has efficacy against cane blight. So I will tell you that we do not have good tools for cane blight management. Miravos seems to be the most effective product. So timing applications for botrytis with Miravos significantly reduce cane blight infections. Um, one of the things I wanna point out is applications of products that have botrytis efficacy and switch, elevate, Kinja, Luna Tranquility, Velum Prime, and Miravos all have botrytis activity. But if you're using these products uh, for cane blight, uh, it has implications for fomenting resistance to botrytis. So if you're using any of those products, particularly like Miravos, I put my glasses on now and I can see that Tom Walters is here. So feel free, raise your hand if you if I stumble or you want to add something. Um, if you apply any of these products like Miravos for cane blight, that needs to count towards your applications for botrytis when you're thinking about resistance management. Um, and so applications out time outside this window has negative implications for uh, uh, botrytis. And I said um, for botrytis resistance management, and that said Luna Tranquility, that's a mistake. This should say Velum Prime. Just so you know, Velum Prime and Luna Tranquility is the same, the same product, the same molecule. It's just a different formulation. So I wrote down the wrong formulation. But at, if you were to put down Velum Prime early, that was at A and B, targeting root lesion nematode, that counts against your botrytis applications. So, for example, you cannot, cannot put down Velum Prime, Velum Prime, and then come back and use Luden Tranquility. Not only is that bad mojo, that's a label violation. Um, and you also would not want to use Velum Prime, Velum Prime in any of the FRAC Group 7 products. So you would not follow it with Pristine. Uh, you would not follow it with Kinja. But more on that when I talk about the botrytis um, issue. Another thing I want to bring up is Miravos. So I talked about Miravos as being the best thing that we saw for control of cane blight. So Miravos contains this molecule. So I got to try this. I'm an entomologist, not a plant pathologist. These numbers, these don't, does not roll off my tongue. Pydeflumatifin um, is, is Miravos and it is registered on raspberries. It is a frat group seven, same as Boscolid, if it's in pristine, Luna Tranquility, Kinja. It's highly effective against botrytis and appears to have no cross resistance to Boscolid resistant botrytis. Miravus Prime is the same product and Flutioxanil. Flutioxanil is one half of what is in Switz. So Miravos Prime is a different frat group seven and um, Flutioxanil. This is a BSF product. This is a switch replacement because switch has got some resistance issue. This is the replacement. I should say is, this could be considered a, a replacement for, I said, for, for switch. But here's a catch. Mirvas Prime is registered on blueberries, but not registered on raspberries. 
and it has two modes of actions of effective against botrytis. So Miravos is registered on raspberries, not on blueberries. Miravos Prime is registered on blueberries, not on raspberries. Miravos Prime is the ticket, more of a ticket than Miravos. So Virginia Stockwell, USDA's Virginia Stockwell and I recognized this and we said, hey, Syngenta, you need to register this on Raspberry. Syngenta says they are willing to do this, to register this product on uh, Raspberries, but we need to keep pressure on Syngenta to register Miravos Prime on Blueberries. Um, so listen, I'm not, I don't market for anybody, um, for any chemical company. I'm not pushing any product. I have no vested interest in any product, but I will tell you, consider Miravos on reds and Miravos said Miravos prime on in blues. Um, for several years, I have been funded. Okay, so that work before this was funded by the Washington Red Raspberry Commission. For several years, I have been funded by the Washington Raspberry Commission to do, do work on botrytis, but I haven't been funded for two years to do work on this, but I was still asked to talk about diseases on raspberries. Um, I, I, do, I did some work that was not funded by the Raspberry Commission that I'm showing here. I think if you looked at this and you knew much about the, about pesticides, you can probably tell who funded this project. But what we have here is a, a group of fungicides, um, different rates. These are experimental products. These are the rates. There were six applications. Um, uh, we collected incidents of data, severity data, but we have something here called the area under the disease progress curve. And it's a, a rating over time about how bad the disease became. As the number goes down, uh, you have uh, a more effective product. Here's the untreated check. What is interesting is you have one product that is just a hair worse than the untreated check. This is pristine. Pristine is the industry standard. This is the one, this has boscolid and it is just like the check and we have switch right here. Uh, close to what the check is. This is a field that has boscolid resistance and cyprodinyl resistance. Switch and pristine does not, will not work in this field. It's a commercial field. And there's a lot of fields that are out there that have resistance, more, more on this later. But as you go down, um, uh, what, here's Kinja, here's Miravos, here's Luna Tranquility, here's a new, uh, uh, well, we don't know what these products are. All I'm going to say is we have a uh, non a, a new mode of action coming uh, that has activity in Spotrius that we can't talk about. This is Cannonball. Um, I put Cannonball is not registered. It will not be registered. But this is Flutioxanil. This is this is a product that is straight Flutioxanil. It's a high rate of Flutioxanil. Flutioxanil is in switch. So what's going on here is we have resistance against cyprodinil. There's not enough flutioxanil to have much control, but if you were to put a higher rate of flutioxanil in, you do get a better rate of control. This is one of the reasons why we know, one of the reasons why we know that we have, have resistance. So these are all, these three products right here are all, new frat group seven, they're in the same class as pristine, but each of these are in a different subgroup that there's no cross resistance to boscolid resistance. And so these, this, is a, this is a trial that shows you that the new frat group seven fungicides don't have cross resistance to boscolid. Um, um, Tobin Peaver showed this in a lab. This is an example in the field that shows the, the, the new frat group sevens will control boscolid resistant, boscolid resistant botrytis. If you look at the products that are out there that we say have efficacy, 
this is the list. This is this is what raspberry growers have to control botrytis. And I have them ranked by their frat group. This, if you're not familiar with this, this is Fungicide Resistance Action Committee. And this is this is a group of scientists, mostly are the registrants of these products that get together and assign uh, where they belong in terms of their 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 mode of action. So we have one. Okay, and these are package mixes where it says 7-Eleven. Uh, ele this 11, this 11, this 3, um, and this 9 do not have activity against botrytis. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 modes. We have 7 modes of action to use against botrytis. However, we have resistance uh, in Ipridione. So group two, we have widespread resistance against Botrytis. Here in group seven, Boscolid, we have we have right, widespread resistance to, to Boscolid. We have resistance in group nine, and we have resistance in group 17. This is an example. This is Tobin Peavers data. This is all raspberry fields. They sampled, let's see, uh, 10 fields, nine out of 10 fields had resistance to phenhexamid, uh, 10 out of 10 had resistance to boscolid, nine out of 10 fields had some level to cyprodinol. Again, this is switch, this is pristine, this is elevate. Later on, we found out that we had resistance to ro uh, rovarol, ipridione. So resistance to these products is really, really common. Most fields have resistance to these products in them. Um, this is some additional work. Um, it's it's not just Washington. You can easily find it in British Columbia. They found it in uh, BC and Washington blueberries, Washington blackberries, Washington strawberries. It's all over the place. It's very widespread. Um, okay, as I said, these are the ones that have resistance. There, these are four different modes of action that have resistance to botrytis, uh, and these are the main groups that we have. The ones that don't are PhD, uh, uh, PhD and CAPTAN, neither of which are highly efficacious. This is a list of the products that have efficacy against resistant botrytis. You have the group sevens, Group 19, PhD, and CAPTAN. We only have three modes of action, seven of which we, one of the main members already has resistance. We got 19 and M4. These two are like fighting botrytis with one arm behind your back. So we are on knife's edge, a knife's edge of losing our ability to control botrytis. If the group sevens that, that are on this screen, right now they, there's not cross resistance. It is considered highly likely it's a matter of time before we develop resistance. It, it makes a genetic mutation, allows it to jump over and, and has cross resistance. Then we're gonna be reliant on Captan and, and PhD. So I hope you are listening. I hope you're digesting this. I hope you're taking this seriously. I hope it makes you nervous and it makes you think about this and makes you receptive to what's coming next. Um, if you have multiple years use of switch, of elevate, of pristine, of roverol, you very likely have resistance to one or maybe all of them. I was working in a field where there's resistance at least to two of them. I have been pushing this effort that uh, Chakrahar talked about this high throughput method. It's year five of this. We got him a whole wad of money, not him, his predecessor, to develop this high throughput method. We were gonna have this thing set up where everyone 
they either you take the samples in or they come get the samples and everybody's filled to be typed and you would know how what you have resistance to and you know what level of resistance you have in your field well in year five and we don't have it yet but i where where he is the fourth person in five years to be working on this and i'm hoping that you'll be able to get your field typed like you know every six months i go to the doctor i get a blood draw they they test my blood and they tell me what my problems are that's what we want to do you can get your fields typed but right now i asked chakrahar hey when can we start sending growers to you and he kind of nervously laughs and says not now um maybe next year which is what he told me last year um so basically your best guess right now is okay who's used switch and elevate pristine row wall? everyone has to raise their hand every one of you guys have got resistance to some of these i just don't know how bad and I don't know to which ones. So here's what you do. You need to use Rovrol, even though we have resistance. Okay, so we developed resistance in the 90s to Rovrol. We stopped using it. There's what's called a fitness cost uh, for Rovrol resistance. And so if you don't use it like we didn't use, we used Pristine and Switch and other products for 20 years, and the frequency of that resistance gene went down. Didn't go away. You'll you'll never get rid of a resistance gene. It will be in the population, albeit at very low levels. So what happens is if we start using it six times in a row, it'll come back and we'll burn Rovrol out in no time. But if you make six applications and make one of them to Rovrol, you'll be able to keep access to that product. So use Rovrol, and it says Rovrol, but I'm gonna say Ipridione, um, Meteor, for example, no more than once per season. If you're in Whatcom County, probably don't use Elevate. Uh, based on some later testing, Elevate resistance was everywhere because everyone used Elevate very heavily. If you have a history of pristine, you may not want to use it. In the case of switch, even if you have a history of switch, you probably still want to use it in most cases if it's working for you because it also has flutioxanil in it. It has an active ingredient called flutioxanil, which will have activity. Tank mix with Captan. Captan has a multi-site use. All these other fungicides except for PhD uh, have one site of action, which means it's much easier for the fungi. It requires one particular mutation in the fungi to develop resistance. For multi-site means it attacks the disease in multiple places, which means the fungi has to simultaneously mutate multiple times, making it much, much harder for it to develop resistance. So use Captan uh, for resistance management. You can um, also say the same thing for PhD. Use Captan at the high rate, two pounds. If your fruit is going or may go to Canada, don't use Captan. This is why. Um, this is uh, residue data that I'm working on with uh, Ms. Camille Synergistic Pesticide Lab. Everyone's got MRLs 20. Uh, Europe, of all, EU has 30. It's the only place I've heard of that they get a higher MRL than we do. But Canada has five. And this residue data says there ain't no way that we're going to get below five. So uh, use Captain unless you have the potential to go to Canada also include phd in your program phd is not the most highly effective botrytiside that's out there it does have activity it will work we need that additional mode of action so these are group seven this is all the group seven products they're in the same group of boscolid but we don't have resistance against them but we have to manage these this is the only thing that's keeping us in the raspberry business if you have Botrytis or is this group of products, but we are this close to losing them to resistance. So we don't want to mess around and find out what happens if we develop resistance to these. So don't use any more than two applications of any one of these products in a season. So don't use Kenja, Pontellus, Miravon, Miravos, or Luna Tranquility more than twice in a season of any one of these. Um, there are some management considerations. You got to worry about MRLs. Not all of these products have all the MRLs. 
when I'm talking about this, I'm not taking the MRL complications into account. It's just too complicated for this talk right now. I'm not taking the cost of products into account. Obviously, that is a major consideration. The next slide, I will show you a cost consideration. Also, if surfactants are involved. Also, your decision which products will be used uh, will be, might be dictated by other pests that you have out there. Some of these fungicides have activity against mites. Some of them have activity against nematodes. Um, there's some other considerations, but uh, by the time I got this far into my, this is talk five of six in two days, I've kind of lost my um, uh, brain cells about some other considerations that are out there. So I'm going to show you examples of, oh, okay. So here are your, here are things to do. Tank mix with captain at two pounds or tank mix with PhD. Rotate your group sevens with PhD, captain, and ipridione. Don't apply any frat group seven products more than twice in a season. Do not use different frat group seven products consecutively. I see some of you folks taking pictures out there. If there's one slide you take pictures of, of my six talks, do it at the end of this slide. Try to include switch in your program because it has two modes of action. Use of frat group sevens for other uses, such as Miravos for cane blight, Vellum Prime for illusion nematode, Fontelis for yellow rust, or Miravon, I think it's Miravon, Miravon for mummy berry, or some of these other products for anthracnose counts against your Botrytis resistance management program. Use, okay, use of Miravos against cane blight, Vellum Prime, okay, root leash nematode, Fontelis for yellow rust counts. So if you're going to take a picture, take this, there's your, there's the shot. Um, I'm going to give you some model botrytis programs. Okay, this is a Cadillac program. Now this is, uh, this is for people that have, uh, uh, that, that's, that, that can afford this. Every product is tank mixed with Captan. So you do switch, switch, because uh, it has this has activity against mummy berry and botrytis. You've got Kinja. Kinja also has activity uh, against botrytis and mummy berry. And then I picked Fontellus. Fontellus, because if you do this, Fontellus has activity against yellow rust. So you, you, this takes, oh, I said mummy berry when this is a raspberry talk, but you get the picture. Um, your uh, product choices will be influenced by other diseases. So, but hey, uh, this would work for the uh, for a blueberry program as well. Uh, this is one if if you want to if you want to have a Cadillac program, but you're going to Canada, uh, switch plus Captain, switch plus Captain, Kenja plus Captain, and then the last three applications do not have Captain. So this is a Cadillac program that that could go to Canada. So you could use Vellum Prime early for cane blight. Uh, early for root lesion nematode. Um, then I have Luna Tranquility, which actually, a, that's a no-no. This should switch around with switch because this is the same product. So you'd have Vellum Prime, then switch. Then you get Luna Tranquility, Miravon, Miravon, Roval, Roval. Here's Miravos, Miravos, switch, switch, Roval, PhD. In this case, you have one, two, three, four, five different modes of action. This is uh, hardcore resistance management, five different modes of action. Here's pristine, pristine, switch, switch, Roverall PhD. Again, this is another five, uh, five modes of action. Okay, so let's say you're cheap and you're not going to Canada. Here's the, the, a, a cheap one, captain, 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 captain. Um, we don't like using the same mode of action, but if you're going to do it, you can do it with Captan because it has so many modes of action. It's not what we like to see, but if you want to be cheap, you can. In fact, there's one program cheaper than this that I've seen, and that is Captain, 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 just four shots of, of that. Um, here's another one, Maravon, Maravon, switch, switch, Fontellus, Fontellus. Maravon, Maravon, switch, switch, Fontellus, Fontellus, same one as I just said. 
all tank mixed with captan or phd there is a fit for each one of these programs there's a lot of other programs but this kind of has some of the guiding principles so lots of moving parts in a botrytis management plan cost fc resistance management mrls other pests etc I went through that fast. I have some time for questions. Yes. What can you add, Dr. Walters? I don't know if I can add anything, but I, I was wondering if you would go back to oh. the idea about not using uh, or making your vellum prime count as a group seven application for botrytis because you know those vellum prime applications go in through the drip line oh they do, okay they do okay pop in you know okay through the soil surface but they're okay. mostly right. down in the root zone all right okay that's a very good point i wasn't thinking about that i was when i was up there i was thinking okay tell them how we made our foliar applications sure yeah so like I was saying, the, the vellum prime went in as a drip application, just the way you would do it for nematode control on the label. The other products, the CDEFG ones, they went on uh, sprayed on at the base of the plant. You know, the bottom two nozzles just pointed right in towards the base, trying to aim for the places where the catcher plates are. Okay, you made it, you, you correct, you caught me in an error. That, that's right, that's, that's a good save there. So, because this goes in through a drip, goes in the roots, is systemically translocated, that doesn't count against your budget. So, okay, so when I say, hey, when I said I was wrong, I was mistaken. You could do vellum prime, vellum prime, and follow up with linen tranquility because that is, there's no selection pressure against botrytis when you apply vellum prime through drip. That is a very good point. Thank you, sir. Okay, what else? Yes, Ravneet. Wait to get a microphone. Thank, thank you, Alan. Um, uh, I have a question. Because uh, the resistance to fungicides are increasing, and um, with raspberries, we usually uh, replant five to 12-year cycles. Um, and I'm just kind of trying to think, to think outside the box of that. Um, if that one year that we do replant, uh, we usually do uh, one year of, of cover crop where we don't plant raspberries. So I'm thinking maybe um, a way to approach it is to um, break down the soil genetic cycle during that one year where we have cover crop and we have not planted raspberries. So um, like it's possibly like, um, um, like uh, industrial hemp, um, planting that in the same logistics that we would plant raspberries as in spacing, maybe as a way just to kind of um, introduce some genetic diversity? Well, well, first of all, I'd probably say if you're going to pick a crop, I would not go with industrial hemp. Uh, I think that ship has sailed. Well, but well, well, just as, a as an example, I understand that. So no, I would not do that. I would not expect any, any benefit from that in terms of reducing the load. The last talk that I gave, we were talking about using a dormant application of oil to maybe reduce, uh, reduce uh, mites on raspberries. So you're thinking of kind of analogous thing that won't work with botrytis. The reason will not work for botrytis is there is so much movement from field to field because of spores. It doesn't matter what you do in that field. Uh, it's a whole new ball game the next year because it is, you'd have to wipe out. It just won't work. There's so much botrytis spores in the air. Every field out here, every berry field, and in non-berry fields, botrytis is on everything. Is um, thinking outside the box is good. That idea won't work. Is there any connection between Phythopora and cane blight? No, completely different diseases. Okay. Thank and you. I don't know if you guys all remember. Someone asked, "Oh, is you that ask about?" You kind of stuck on this Phytophthora business. So Lisa Jones, who's a 
a real plant pathologist uh, came up to me afterwards and told me that phytoth the phytophthora species that attacks blueberries is a warm weather species and is a problem in warmer temperatures. And she does not believe that phytophthora on is going to be a problem on blueberries like it is in warmer climates. Didn't say it couldn't be, but it's more of a problem in warmer climates. Hey, Betsy, do you want to switch 